Thank you, Dr. Fijak. Uh, thank you. Today, I will do the easy part, I guess, presenting the paper. And uh, my dear friend, Dr. Heinstein, will do the hard part, answering the questions. <laughs> yeah. Today, we will examine the details of Oscar Recher's manuscript trade, which contributed significantly to enriching Western libraries, especially libraries in Germany, and focuses on the history of his manuscript trade with Germany. Recher was, was a prolific orientalist of the 20th century. He spent his life between Germany and Istanbul from 1909 to 1925, eventually settling down in Turkey in 1925. As a global trader and broker of manuscripts, who was interested in Islamic manuscripts due to his field of study, he sold thousands to various libraries in Europe and America, and two of these being the Berlin State Library, then the Königliche Bibliothek, and Leipzig University Library. In accordance with Article 5 of the Asare Atika regulation enacted in 1906, manuscripts were counted as antiquities and their purchase and sale as well as being taken abroad were forbidden in Turkey during the Ottoman times, I mean. This regulation was also in effect during the period Reshar was active. However, the definition of Asare Atika not being very distinct here likely did not prevent the trade of these types of manuscripts nor their removal from the country. With the decree dated August 25th, 1925, after the proclamation of the Republic, the exportation of any kind of valuable works with regard to calligraphy, gilded hand ornamenting and miniature paintings, as well as of manuscripts of treasures of language became strictly forbidden in Turkey. Despite this, taking manuscripts outside of the country was notably easy. Resha was not a manuscript collector. He bought manuscripts in order to immediately sell them, but he may also be assessed as a manuscript broker in this aspect. In the letter he sent to Leipzig University Library in 1929, regarding the discount requested for books and manuscripts, Resha stated that he would be unable to make any change in price because he did not own the books and manuscripts himself. According to Professor Haze, Reshar sold the manuscripts of the bookseller Muzaffer Ozak on commission in the 60s, 1960s. If Hazes' claim is true, and what Reshar said in the letter in question was not a sales tactic, then Reshar can be said to have sold the manuscripts on behalf of book antiquarians and received commissions from these sales. Reshar is also understood from an anecdote to have sold manuscripts on his own behalf. So, what was Oscar Reshar searching for in Turkey? He appeared to be convinced that the most proper guide for his studies would be Ismail Saib Efendi, a very famous Arabist, and that the best place would be Istanbul, a paradise in terms of Islamic manuscripts. At 26 years old, Dr. Reshar began benefiting from Saib Efendi, examining and copying manuscripts and preparing library catalogues in addition to publishing texts. Reshar, who had been drafted in World War I, came to Istanbul again in 1924, and his intensive manuscript trade also started that year. Many libraries from Europe to America owe part of the size of their Islamic manuscript collections to Reshar. Berlin State Library and the libraries in Munich, Hamburg, Leipzig, Göttingen, Hale Sale in Germany can be counted within this framework. We, we believe that Reshar was passionate about printed and written materials. He worked as a de facto librarian for 42 years. The manuscript and printing trade should also be a manifestation of this passion. Thanks to this, he saw and examined many more books and gained knowledge. Reshar's name is rarely and indifferently mentioned in the recollections about secondhand booksellers. We think Reshar had a distinctive relationship with the book antiquarians. These booksellers likely set manuscripts aside for him. Perhaps this is the reason why no one has come out depicting Reshar as choosing from manuscripts from auctions, stalls, and shops. We have compiled a memoir from Sabrikos, 
supporting this claim. One day, Reşer stopped by while the bookseller Muzaffer Ozak was talking with his guests in his shop. Ozak took a few manuscripts from a drawer and handed them to Reşer. Then Reşer left. Reşer's name may also be considered to have not been mentioned in particular because sending manuscripts abroad was known to be something that would not be well received in Turkey. Usefulness is had here in looking at the manuscripts that have been included in Berlin State Library and Leipzig University Library by way of Reşer. His commercial relationship with the Berlin State Library started in 1913, gained momentum after 1924, and ended in 1936. 1,192 manuscripts entered into the collection of the Berlin State Library by means of Rescher. Rescher sold 262 manuscripts to the Leipzig University Library between 1925 and 1934. The 1,722 manuscripts that were sold to the Berlin State Library after Rescher's death and purported to be his personal collection had nothing to do with Rescher, according to our investigations. These manuscripts were sold to the library by Ayla Koenig in 1974. According to the Leipzig University Library's archive, Rescher would send the manuscript to libra manuscripts to library accompanied by a price list. Manuscripts were sent to both libraries mainly by post. The payments for the manuscripts were sent to the Galata branch of the Deutsche Bank in Istanbul, in Reşer's name. When looking at the Reşer manuscripts in these two libraries, one can say he was more concerned with the manuscripts' contents rather than their physical appearance. In spite of this, he also sent manuscripts that stand out because of their physical characteristics. He can in particular be said to have not sent manuscripts that were easily found everywhere in his time or that were widely read among the people. Lost works, unique works, autograph copies, and palace manuscripts are included among the manuscripts he sent. According to Emil Graz from the Munich State Library and the director of Leipzig University Library, Otto Gloning, the fees Rescher requested were quite reasonable. So how was Rescher who'd come to Istanbul with a love of learning, possibly able to manage a manuscript business with this intensity. What had the state of the book trade in Istanbul been since the 20s? In order to understand this, taking a look at the effects, certain developments such as the evolution of madrasas, closure of dervish lodges and zaviyas, the alphabet reform, estate sales, and closure of Dal Funun had on the manuscript trade would be useful. Let's take a look at the madrasas. With the law of the unification of instruction in 1924, all education institutions became affiliated with the Minister of Education and the medreses were closed. The manuscript in the medreses were suddenly became functionless. The books that had been taught were left out of the education system. As a result of this, the printed and handwritten works fell into the hands of book antiquarians over time. Not being considered very valuable, the medresa books, including manuscripts, were sold in piles on displays in front of second-hand bookshops. As a result, the closure of the madrasas can be said to have caused a considerable number of manuscripts to enter the book market. However, the majority of these types of manuscripts have not possessed the qualifications that would have been of interest to Rescher. Let's see the Tekkes and Zawiyas. Darish lodges and similar locales were shut down through law in 1925. A significant portion of the books and archival materials found in these places were left unclaimed, distributed, and eventually ended up on the market. Many Sufi themed manuscripts that appear to have emerged from Darvish lodges and their circles can be understood from what Tresha had sold to have been found in the bazaar after this date. Those who own books that were in the vicinity of Darvish lodge should have disposed of them over time. German librarians who were aware of this situation requested manuscripts from Rescher on Sufism, especially those that had come from Darvish lodges. One of the factors was that the prices were relatively affordable. One of the Darvish lodges whose library had been partially scattered was the Hajibek Tash 
Darvish Lodge, located in Nevshehir, then Kirshehir. Importance would be had in mentioning one important manuscript that had come out of this lodge, which Resha had sold to the Berlin State Library. This is a composed manuscript that was prepared for Uweis Bey, son of Sheikh Suvaroğlu Ali Bey, the last prince of the Dulkadirs. Its content is remarkable. The Mejmoa is comprised of eight texts and includes Shukri Bitlisi's Divan that had not been beheld previously, as well as the first version of the poetic history called Selim Name. As is understood from the ownership record and seal, the manuscript came from the Haji Bektaş Dervish Lodge. The premises of Haji Bektaş were closed in 1925. Some of the lodge's possessions were auctioned off. Others were delivered to the general director of foundations and the books were delivered to the general director of libraries. Rumor states that officials sold some of the works in Ankara during this process and some of the works that had been absconded were said to have been sold to Western libraries. If the Waste Bay Mejmoa had not been removed from the Dervish Lodge previously, it must have fallen into the hands of the second-hand booksellers and then passed into, the, into Reshar's hands. According to what we learned from the acquisition journal of the library, Reshar had sold his Mejmoa to the Berlin State Library in 1931. Let's take a look at the alphabet reform. The second-hand booksellers who previously tried to cope with the distinction between the printed books and manuscripts witnessed another great change in 1928. With law, the use of Arabic letters was completely outlawed. The books found in printing houses were destroyed. The book antiquarian Ozak said, Muzaffer Ozak said, at that time, no one valued manuscripts or calligraphies. If someone had a mushaf or calligraphy in their house, they would try to get rid of it as if it were a cobra snake. Everyone was trying to sell what they had on hand. Following the alphabet reform, works using the old letters became worthless, worthless and meaningless. In fact, many of these types of works were disposed of as though having them was considered objectionable. Some of the manuscripts and printed works with old letters were burned, while others were buried or thrown in the garbage. Some were collected by state administrators, while others were sold to second-hand booksellers. This anxiety continued into the 1950s. Russia also collected manuscripts that first became discredited in the face of printed books, then turned into unwanted assets after 1928, selling them to libraries in the West. Gloning, being aware of the developments, in the letter he sent to Graz in 1931, wrote that these types of works will disappear over time because no one reads the Arabic te letter text and thus purchasing as many manuscripts as possible from Reshar is well advised. Looking at the journey of one important manuscript that had been delivered to Berlin by Reshar's hand via Yalkenji, Raif Yalkenji, who had given up selling the Arabic lettered printed works after the alphabet reform and turned completely toward manuscripts would be appropriate in this context. According to Abdulbaki Gölpınarlı, this manuscript is the oldest known copy of Divan of Yunus Emre. It was received from Yelkenci, one of the famous second-hand booksellers of the time. The fate of one Divan of Yunus Emre that was known to have passed through the hands of Yelkenci, thanks to the photos he had taken of it and loaned to Gölpınarlı, remained unknown for, unknown for 90 years. The photographs disorder and lack of clarity led to problems regarding the poems of Yunus Emre, and people wondered for years where the copy had gone. Through our efforts, this copy was discovered to be in Berlin. Reshar had sold it to the Berlin State Library in 1931. Let's see what we can say about estate sales. Among the developments that motivated the manuscript market were the estate sales of the library owners who died during Ottoman Empire's transition to the Republic, especially after the alphabet reform. When estates ended up in the book antiquarians, they would be in great demand in the bazaar. We cannot, we cannot know whether Reshar himself participated in the auctions 
However, some manuscripts are found among those sold to Berlin that are understood to have been selected from estates. The tale of one very valuable manuscript, Reshar sold to the Berlin State Library, and that had come from Yanko Hochi's estate is remarkable in this context. Kwami's Fetname is a verse history and a palace manuscript and a unique copy. Franz Babinger declared this manuscript to have come from the library of Yanko Hochi. Hochi was famous for his library. This library was sold off after his death. Although the books the Berlin State Library bought in 1917 had been transferred to the German embassy in Istanbul, they were unable to be sent to Germany due to the armistice with the transfer processes being carried out later through the Dutch embassy. We are unable to know how many of these books were manuscripts. However, the 114 manuscripts recorded with the note Bibl Hochi in the library's acquisition journal must be from this sale. Some of Hochi's books are understood to have remained in Istanbul and been sold off over time. Yelkenci informed Babinger that Fethiname had been sold to Germany. Despite Hochi Bey previously telling Ali Emiri Efendi that he had gifted this manuscript to the former ambassador of America, Babinger thinks that Hochi was in possession of the manuscript at that time. The reason why he kept it from Ali Emiri Efendi was that the manuscript is a palace copy. Babinger thinks that Hochi bought the manuscript from the book Antiquarians and says that after Hochi's death, his books came to the book Antiquarians occasionally, with Fethiname being bought by Rıza Nasrullah and sold to Germany. We cannot know when whether Bobbinger had gotten this information from the library or from Yalkenji. According to the library's acquisition journal, Reshar was the one who sold Fetname to the library. The remarkable point is that the 25 volumes of manuscripts from the same sale are generally valuable manuscripts, some of which have Hochi's marks such as ownership records, records of sale or reading notes. All of these manuscripts may possibly have come from Hochi's library. The claim that the manuscript had been sold by Rıza Nasrullah is also compatible with the allegation that Reshar had sold manuscripts on behalf of second-hand booksellers by receiving a commission. Before we conclude, one more, one more issue can be pointed out here that energized the manuscript market after the 20s. It's the evolution of the Arifunun. With the 1933 Dar University reform, many instructors who were working at the Arifunun Reshar among them, became unemployed. This also meant that the instructors' books were non-functional. In our opinion, some of the instructors who were known to have financial difficulties could possibly have sold their books and manuscripts. These are expected to be relatively high-quality manuscripts. When we conclude, to think that Reshar, whom Shesh Ramazan Sheshan defined as he had nothing to do with money, what he had was enough. His life was also not very orderly. He was a man who'd given himself over to learning. Had acted with a merchant mentality appears unreasonable, especially when one takes into consideration that he sold the manuscripts at affordable prices. He must have had other reasons for sending manuscripts abroad. Apart from his interest in written materials, our opinion is that while on one hand he had provided the Orientalists with the materials they would study, on the other hand, he had been attempting to permanently preserve these works that had fallen out of favor. Reshar's ability to conduct the manuscript trade as easily as he did has raised question marks in minds. According to us, one of the most significant matters that made Reshar's trade possible was that he had the backing of Ismail Saib Efendi. According to us, Saib Efendi was aware of Reshar's manuscript trade. A postcard supports our claim. On this postcard that was sent to Reshar's address in Stuttgart in 1931, Ismail Saib Efendi said, Raif Bey received the check funds and sends greetings. The Raif Bey mentioned here should be the book antiquarian Raif Yalkenji. He is known to have only sold manuscripts at that time. What's meant by check funds must be, the, must be the fee for sent manuscripts. Let us conclude by quoting the statements from Rudy Lidner, 
who'd observed Reshar in Ibrahim Manas' shop, a book antiquarian with whom Reshar had been in contact in his final years. You can see it on the screen. Uh, thank you for your attention.